So for this session, uh, uh, uniform and everything. I got my got my transporter <laughs> on. Uh, so for this session, we want to do a little hands-on, have a little fun with you guys. Um, try yeah. and liven it up a little you bit. You know us so well. Um, you know, we, we're taking a bit of a technology risk to see how this goes off. But as you guys can <laughs> see, there's a transporter in front of you. Um, and unless anybody's opposed I'm, to I'm installing, both pleased and somewhat disappointed that I didn't need to pull any tools out in order to open it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm all conflicted. <laughs> Funny you mentioned that. We actually wondered, you know, should we give them the box and give them the full out-of-box experience, but we just figured for the sake of time we'd go ahead and, and down? get Your the drive plugged down. in for you. But, I think uh, we're in able front. That's okay. It's literally 20 seconds to do it. But anyway, uh, so if anybody's enough. opposed to installing software, if you don't want to install the client, you know, you don't have to participate, but you know, we think it'll be kind of fun, and you guys can get a real good sense for it's what the user experience. It's going to work for the other, uh, you know, compatible with the other solutions that that are going to be on these uh, desktop laptops as well. Absolutely should, shouldn't be any problem at all. Yeah, let's uh -huh. see, I've got a sugar sync, a SimpliVid, SimpliVid, and Google Box and Dropbox Office. clients already. So what's one more? Wonder, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, if you like what you see with Transporter, you won't have a need for all those other ones, right? <laughs> 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 Certainly the goal. But anyway, uh, before we do that, because that could take some time, um, and I want to make sure to keep us on schedule, what I thought I'd do is I'd show you guys kind of the product lineup to give you a sense of where we've come from, and then show you some of the administrative features on the business products, because really, the experience that you guys are going to get with these products is very much what uh, a consumer and user would get. Um, and you won't see the administrative control. So the way that we've designed the business products to kind of hide some of the complexity that we introduced um, is you won't see it with one of these devices, but if you have an organization and some business class products, you can absolutely deploy some of these in remote locations and they will be able to be part of the organization. Um, but when you have one of those as a standalone, you just see what an average consumer would see. So For what it's worth, I just went through the setup. It took me about three minutes, and that was because the download took three minutes. Yeah. For the client. Little, Other than that, I'm a little it's concerned about the simultaneous <coughs> uh, downloads because we are on a set. We tried to keep it on a separate subnet so that uh, so that people in the building wouldn't accidentally claim transporters. But I'm done. Done. <laughs> Yeah, it's all done. I'm registered. Awesome. Well, Ready to start to point data. Kind of redundant it. for you, but <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, so I've got a couple browsers open, um, and uh, what I wanted to show you guys first. So, what we had to do, obviously, we did a lot of research to understand um, what we kind of consider to be the minimum viable product for the business class stuff. Um, and uh, Jeff mentioned the Active Directory. We've talked about a lot of the data protection stuff that we've done, um, but obviously, we knew we needed some administrative controls. Um, before we had basically the owner of the device and we had guest users. And so what we've done is we've introduced two brand new owners with the business class systems. We've introduced an organizational administrator um, and then we've introduced an organizational user. So when you, as Jeff mentioned before, when you guys share these personal transporters with somebody that's a guest user, they're basically piggybacking on that transporter. So, and what a lot of people have said is, hey, I've got a household with three people. It'd be great if I could kind of carve out spots on the transporter so that my wife could have her little sandbox and I have my little bit of space. And that's basically what we've done with the business class systems. So with the organizational user, it effectively allows the administrator to sort of carve up the device. Everybody gets their own virtual spot on the device um, is how it works. So I've got the org admin stuff up first. I just wanted to show you guys and run you through. Um, you know, so it's super easy. Obviously, you found the website. You can just go to filetransporter.com. We've got a, we got a sign in or secure.connecteddata.com uh, is where the site goes. But you'll see that when I, when I log in as an administrator, I've got, uh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff here in the upper left-hand corner. Um, so if I click on the top one, that's a transporter. So I only have one transporter on this account. Um, so I can get a device level view. Um, I can see all of my organizational users within the device. So again, you know, our whole thing is, is we feel like with the cloud, um, IT guys are struggling a little bit with control. Um, there's, a, there's a sense of, uh, or there's certainly a loss of control uh, with stuff when you move to the cloud. And, and you know, we've joked that IT guys are some of the most controlling people in the world. Um, they don't like to give that sense of control. And so really what we've tried to do is give the administrator full control over his entire environment. Um, so he can see all the devices, he can see all the users, and he can even drill down and start looking at how those users are using that data, uh, what's being shared. Um, so he gets a very holistic view. And you know, one of the questions that came up before, which was a great question, if I'm sharing with 12 people, how many copies of data are there? Um, the administrator can actually control that um, down to the individual person. So for example, if he's got um, maybe a remote office that has 12 people, he can decide, you know what, I'm going to put a transporter there, I'm going to put a transporter 15 there, uh, I'm going to have everybody's files there so they've got a nice fast local copy, uh, and then I'm going to have that replicate back to one of the devices in the data center uh, here locally. 
and then I've got two copies, two different locations I'm covered. Um, so really the great thing about it is as they deploy multiple transporters, no matter where they are, they can really decide what level of replication do I want, where do I want the data located, um, and finally who do, who do I want to have access to that information. So, so I'll go back to the transporter real quick. So um, I've got the one here. As you can see, um, we do have some pretty basic information about it. As Jeff said before, we've got, a, we've got a general sense about where the device is located based on the IP address. Um, we do know some of the capacity points. We've got some minimal hardware information. Um, because it's important for us to be able to send the proper alerts to the administrator. So obviously if storage is getting low, uh, things of that nature, if the device goes offline, administrators want to know that stuff. Um, but again, none of the actual end user data is anything that we have any visibility into. So, and that's, that's huge. I mean, when we talk to, um, a lot of lawyers have adopted the transporter because they love Dropbox, they love the productivity that it does, they know they shouldn't use it, but there really wasn't a solution until Transporter came along. Um, but one of the things that, uh, um, that they constantly talk about is, how do I know for sure you can't see my data? Um, and so it's one of those things where we kind of have to talk about that. And you know, we're obviously um, continuing to develop content around that. Um, you'll see a security white paper come out in the next month or so to talk about that. But, but literally the way that they've architected this, um, if the government came and subpoenaed connected data and said, we need this information, what you guys see here is what we'd be able to turn over to them, and then it would be up to the government to go and actually find the transporters and provide subpoenas for where they're physically located. So um, I think for law firms and other, other things, other industries where there's sensitive data they're dealing with, that gives them a real level of comfort to know that's the case. And we even have people come back two or three times because they don't believe us. Just so I'm clear, <laughs> just so I understand. So, so as you can see, I can see information about the device. Um, I can see information about the folders uh, that are being shared and I can drill down on any of this stuff. Um, I just wanted to show you, there's just a, just a few things that might be interesting here. So under advanced, so um, we do give you some capabilities to control the hardware so you can set the bandwidth limits uh, if you want to be able to control how much bandwidth it's going to use. It's not real sophisticated yet, it doesn't have scheduling capabilities, but that's, that's something that we're, that we're looking into. Um, and there's where you would enable that backup or SMB share uh, that Jeff mentioned before. You know, so if you want to be able to do that, you would just enable it. Um, password protected so only the administrators got uh, got access to it. Uh, communication port, we know that's important. IT guys, um, you know Jeff mentioned before one of the things that we've done is sort of leveraged some of the technologies that Skype and Dropbox and others use to try and circumvent firewalls um, and we can see IT guys get uncomfortable when we mention that and so what we allow them to do is if they want to be able to control all the transporter communication through a single port um, we absolutely allow them to do that as well. Um, and then factory reset unclaimed. So you were asking before about, I don't want to share data with somebody anymore, what do I do? Is there a way to wipe it? Um, now, you have to actually physically own the transporter on your account to be able to do that, um, to be able to see this and be able to do that. But if you think about it from a business perspective, and I've got maybe hundreds of transporters all over the world, um, maybe I want to be able to give fast local copies to some of my remote employees, but I want to be able to know that if that employee is going to leave, if that employee does something I don't like, that I'd be able to, to be able to wipe the data to some extent. And so when you do a factory reset and unclaim, you know, assuming that transporter is still plugged in to the internet and we can talk to it, the first command that it receives from our central service is wipe all the data. And so, you know, very much like an iPhone, as long as we can talk to it, um, we, can, we can remote wipe the data that way. So this, this gives the IT administrator, I think, some really nice controls over being able to remotely wipe the data. Uh, same thing from a user perspective. So obviously we have the syn synchronization that will go down to the computer uh, level and, and the mobile level. So if you remove somebody's an account from an organization, it's the same thing. If they try and communicate uh, with the central service, they open up their laptop, assuming they got an internet connection, the app's still running, uh, the first thing that will receive on that laptop is delete all the data they've got cached. So if I, if I stole that today, yeah. took it home and plugged it into my own hub, which isn't on the internet, yeah, can I talk to it or will it talk to, will it not talk at all until it's got an actual network connection exactly you wouldn't be able to plug directly into that via the ethernet and get anything out of it now it is a form of linux if you knew how to pull the hard yeah, drive out and it. get to some yeah. stuff you know you might be able to see some things but as jeff mentioned one of the things we're working on very close on is encryption at rest you know so once that's encrypted and then you can't talk to it it's pretty much a brick yeah um, without the right capabilities to get to it so okay. so today it's just storing files like literal file you have an smb share that means it's storing it right. in a file system structure that's right that's right yeah and even on the personal ones you guys if if that's how you want to be able to access it you can actually enable the sifs smb on the personal device if you want to be able to get to it that way i mean the reason we did that on on these devices was for media streaming right people like hey i've got an xbox it'd be great to be able to you know stream some stuff off of this thing to my xbox so 
So, but that that was never intended really for any kind of business class use at all. So, I mean, if you open that up, it's full open. If somebody can get on the network, they can see everything. So you kind of lose all the protections and abilities to maybe just make certain folders visible to people. So, um, so that's pretty much it on the uh, on the advanced uh, on the hardware side. Um, you know, if I drill down to the into the organization users, you know, this is nice as well. So obviously, um, I can control you know who is sharing that transporter device. And as Jeff mentioned before, we do have um, what I would call kind of the first phase of an Active Directory tool to allow the connection. Um, and we're going to continue to refine that as well. But but that was one of the things when we researched this, we were like, hey, we got to have some kind of directory service. Nobody, businesses with more than 25 <coughs> users, and even you can argue maybe even smaller than that, they don't want to set up the accounts. They've already well, got you need it. Some type of single sign-on. Yeah, and single sign-on as well. You know, so that's one of the things we're looking at really through the API integration we have. So as Jeff mentioned before, we've got the API. We actually used the API from day one to develop our own apps to make sure it was embedded. So it's not like it was an afterthought. Um, and so we're actually uh, in discussions with a few of the single sign-on guys as well. Um, seems like a smart way to go um, for us as well. So we can do all that stuff. So anything the cloud guys can do, um, we can do as well. In fact, the, uh, the new iOS app that you'll find, assuming a lot of you guys are on Apple, the Android one is really close, um, which is version 3.1. Um, Poor Dave. But on the iOS, uh, on the iOS uh, version 3.1, we've got the storage extensions, which is really nice. So Apple, when they did that, they kind of leveled the playing field. You know, Dropbox had spent a lot of time integrating so that you could get native app access to the Dropbox. Um, and Apple kind of leveled the playing field, which was really nice for us. So that was a bit of a gift uh, for us as well. So anyway. So Jim, with the Active Directory stuff, did you say that was only for the business models? It is only for the business models. That's correct. Yeah. So that's correct. So and, you, it, and you don't expect those to be picked up and moved around a lot, particularly. Exactly. So because otherwise, Active Directory Sync would have been. Exactly. Would, be a right me would be a mess if the devices are on and off the network yeah. and being moved. And, moved and that's around. exactly why we don't expose all the business functionality on these because people don't yeah. care about that. <laughs> so it's just a, it's a different it's a different use model. I mean, what I will tell you about these products that's great um, is it keeps us focused on the user experience um, because you know uh, at any point that there's friction, if people think there's just a little bit of friction over Dropbox, you know we hear about it. Um, and so we've constantly strived and you know version 1.0 you know we had a lot of feedback when we did that that would have been early 2013 I mean we literally went right to the drawing board and re-architected the entire desktop app because what we realized is every place that we differentiated from Dropbox um, you know people were people were having some challenges with it so so anyway all right so as you can see I've got a whole bunch of organization users uh, as the administrator um, I can drill down on this uh, on any of these guys and see what they're doing um, I can see which folders they've got shared. I, I can see who they've got them shared with. Um, and I can decide if I don't like some of these folders, I can actually either remove the member or I can start to remove some of the folders they've got as well. So um, when, as the administrator, when I look at, I'll just show you some of the other functions as well. Um, so organization shared folder. So I can actually do that from the, from the members, but I can do it here as well. Uh, groups, uh, that's a relatively new functionality that we've added in. We started with users and the group functionality came out recently and that's in the Active Directory tool as well. Um, so I can manage all that. But this is kind of cool because I can see as the administrator a holistic view of every shared file link that every user has. Um, and if I maybe see something that says roadmap file, you know, dot PPT and uh, you know, I don't like that that's being shared, I can actually go in and expire it as the administrator. Um, and one of the really nice things that we're working on as well is you'll be able to dump and see a full audit log history of all of this stuff. We've actually added in, you can, you can now start to look at who's been accessing the links, um, but we're getting closer to a full audit log capability because a lot of our customers, as you can imagine, they love the privacy story, they're in sensitive industries, you know, HIPAA and some of these other things um, require that they've got the full audit, uh, audit history as well, so. Can you set uh, links to automatically expire? You can like now. Policy. We just added that in, like literally in the last week, three days ago. <laughs> so you can now. You can, and you can see. So you can see. There's two things we just added in: uh, is you can you can basically schedule it to expire, and you can see who's accessed it and how many downloads there's been based on the IP address. You can see what IP address is downloaded. Now, as an administrator, can I see all of the data? At, uh, all of the data. So what we recommend is you would set up an org. If you're the administrator, you'd set up an org admin account. And then you set up an org user account um, so that you could actually, because then you could give yourself as an org user access to everything. And then you can see it that way. So we try and kind of keep the administrative function separate from the data function. Can you do sub-organizations for large multi-tenant enterprises? I don't think we can do that. Groups? Just just to the group functionality. Yeah. 
So that's what the administrator sees. And I just wanted to point this out because they've got, they've got full visibility. Now, if I switch to what an org user sees, just to kind of contrast that, um, and I'm logged onto the, onto the same transporter device, so this is within the same organization. And as you can see, I don't have a transporter device. I can't see the transporter devices. I can't manage it. I can't tell it where I want my data to reside. Um, I can't see or manage other organizational users. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want people to necessarily have that capability. One of the pieces of feedback we've gotten recently is that there probably is room for maybe another user level that would almost be like a project leader that has some kind of capabilities. And so we're, we're sort of investigating and scoping that right now. We've tried to keep the initial model really simple. Um, but I can, see, uh, I can see all of my shared folders. Um, I can see any groups that I belong to. Um, and this is, this is interesting because here it says no links. So um, this person can only see the links that they've actually created. So again, the administrator's got a holistic view of everything, um, but each org user can only see what they have access to. So any questions about that? All right, so let's get to the app. So, um, so now I'm logged in. This is, this is my actual account that I've had for a couple of years now. So as you can see, it puts a, uh, puts a widget in the top taskbar. It looks like a little cone transporter that's kind of become our iconic uh, uh, look. Uh, and I can see a lot, of, a lot of interesting information just by clicking on that. So you know, whether or not the computer's up to date and whether it's syncing, um, I can open the transporter folder directly from here. If stuff's syncing, I can see if it's syncing to this computer, if it's syncing between transporter devices. I can see all my shared folders, so you can see I'm, I'm a bit of a power user. Um, and the difference in color here is kind of interesting, so I'll talk about one of the, one of the different folder types we've got when I open this, but that's just whether or not those are actually synced to my computer or not, because we have a functionality that allows me to only store stuff on my transporters, which is really nice, um, but get access to it. Uh, I can see the different transporters, so you can see I've got, uh, I've got one at home and I've got one sitting in this office right here. Um, and the ability to take the transporter around is not something that, there, there are use cases where that makes sense, but I think for a lot of people, they got to get their mind around the fact that, it, yes, it's a piece of hardware, and yes, it is small. But what I really want to do is leave it someplace secure and then take my files with me and get access to them remotely. But one of the things I ran into is my transporter that I originally deployed had a terabyte drive. And my sync had a 500 gig drive, and my sync got full. Um, and so instead of trying to sync 500 gigs over the internet, uh, I simply brought it home, hooked it up to the switch, put the bigger drive on it. Uh, our system automatically detects that it's missing data, that it needs to resync. It automatically resynced. It took. I don't know, I did it overnight. I don't know how many hours it took. We brought it back in, plugged it in. Again, the first thing it does when it plugs in the internet is it talks to our central service, so I don't have to mess around with IP addresses or anything like that. Uh, it knows where it is and who it belongs to and where the data needs to go. So it's, uh, it's really seamless from an end user perspective. You, don't, you guys are all really smart. I understand that, and you guys do networking. Uh, but we've tried to make this so that you don't have to be a networking expert to make it work. So, so anyway, so I can see my transporters. I can see some recently changed files. And under more options, um, we got pause syncing now. Um, that, was a, that was a request that's been going on for years. <laughs> it, was a, it was a long request, and, and we finally understood some use cases where that made sense. Um, you know, that you might want to be able to pause the syncing if you've got a large sync job going on, maybe an initial synchronization down to your computer. Um, under preferences, there's a couple things I think that's worth showing that are kind of cool. Um, so, you know, kind of kind of standard stuff here, but. Uh, We've got something called special folders. This is really slick. Um, so what this does is one of the complaints we had early with people, and this was, I believe, a complaint that we heard consistently about Dropbox, is that in order for me to get anything to happen, I've got to put it in my Dropbox folder to make, to make the magic happen. And it was the same with the transporter folder. Uh, what we've done with special folders is we've allowed you to be able to synchronize and remotely access your data in place. Um, we've done that by popular destination. So you can check the desktop, documents, pictures, movies, music, whatever you want to do. And by simply toggling that, that'll automatically synchronize that with your transporter, and now you can get access to that stuff. Okay, but I can't, I can't pick an arbitrary folder yet, right? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So we have had a lot of requests, as you can imagine, for custom special folders. Yeah, well, I'm, and I sync, you know, the templates in the custom dictionary folders, so that all of my machines have all of my jargon in the custom dictionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean that's one of the things that I think SugarSync did really well. Yeah. That's um, is the ability to basically right click. And, and more or less, they allow you to do a custom. You can right click on any of them to do that. So, so for now, it's been limited to this. Um, we've also tried to kind of keep the model simple uh, for people because, again, you know, we're going after the average Dropbox user. Yeah, I, I understand completely that I'm not the average user. <laughs> so, so that's a uh, that's a really nice feature we've added in. Uh, selective sync. Um, maybe I've got a work computer. I've got a home computer. I want to have some stuff here. I want to have some stuff there. Um, obviously, that's nice because we've all got limited hard drive space. Um, we don't necessarily want to sync everything <coughs> that we've got. Um, 
On these devices, I don't recommend it, uh, but as you can see, there's a Wi-Fi widget here. Um, if you can't, for whatever reason, plug it into a switch, you don't have a port, you can't buy an optional Wi-Fi adapter. So if you see the USB port there, you'll see a Wi-Fi thing. So basically, if you go to our website, we recommend one on Amazon that's about 15 bucks. You can put a little Wi-Fi adapter. Um, you're going to get much better performance if you hard plug it into an Ethernet jack. So. And then account. So if I wanted to switch between my personal and my business account, uh, I can do that right here as well. So it's got a lot of nice features and functionality. So let's take a look at my transporter folder, which is going to have a lot of stuff. So I apologize for the view. So as you can see, you know we've we've done a really, you know, I think a really nice job on the icons of making it simple. So obviously, any of the green checks, uh, you know, that stuff's all synchronized. I have a I have a local copy cached on my computer. Um, you know, if I want to drag and drop, you know, maybe Jeff's uh, presentation that he had uh, to my work folder, I'll just do that. So it'll kick off a synchronization job. So you know, in a, in a few seconds, that icon should change to our our blue sync icon. Uh, you can see that with some of these, uh, they're shared. So you can see the little people icon. If they're, if that was actually syncing, it would turn to blue. So I know there's a syncing operation on. So we, we got it down to a single, a single badge per device. Um, and uh, transporter library. This is the thing I wanted to talk to you about. So we don't, because we're private, allow web access to the files. Because again, none of it's hosted in the cloud. Um, but with the transporter library, what's really slick is it allows me to store stuff only on my transporters, but if I got an internet connection, I can still get to it. So for my workflow, and there's a lot of different reasons you might want to do that. Maybe you got a big movie collection that you want to have access to, but you don't want to have synchronized to your computer. Um, my use case is I work on projects and then I archive them. Um, and I like to get to some of that stuff at a later point in time, but I don't need a copy on my 256 gig SSD on my computer. And so I just simply drag and drop the stuff to the transporter library. As you can see, you can share out a library. I can get access to all my stuff. So. Um, it's a really nice way around that issue of we've got limited capacity, but we want access to a lot of stuff. That is nice. Yeah, yeah. And with Jeff, Jeff, and some of the architects just made some performance enhancements. Uh, it's an order of magnitude faster than it was two weeks ago. You guys are going to have a great experience with it, you know, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, because you know, now I don't have to decide between the 256 gig SSD or the exactly. one terabyte hybrid drive for my laptop. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great way. So, you know, obviously mine gets filled up and I go and look for some stuff and stick it in the library. Yeah. And I can still get to it. And I know it's on two copies, so it's on two devices because I've got one at home as well. You know, right, so it's really it's, nice. you know, here's my completed project, but when I'm working on a proposal for the next guy that's something similar to one, totally. I do want to grab that, that file. Yep, absolutely. It so would be even really nicer if it fit into the existing place. I didn't have to put it in a special folder, right? It would just, something on my desktop that I didn't really want on my desktop anymore, but I wanted it. You know, yeah, it's still be, available, like a, st a stub or something like oh, that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Leave something behind. It, it would right. be it'd be nice to right click on any arbitrary folder, and yeah. say make this a non synced but available when oh, you can on that. demand. So here, you you absolutely can do that. Uh, as long as it's like either a special folder or my transporter folder. So for example, if I had this one, um, you can see I got a transporter contextual menu. Um, if I wanted to be able to move, like say for example. Uh, something to the transporter and, library I should be able and to And being in the minority that still runs Windows, I assume that you'll let us know when anything you're doing on the Mac doesn't work. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, Windows actually um, is a little ahead of Mac right now. The 3.1 got out a little bit ahead of. We don't we don't necessarily, I mean, a lot of us use Macs here, but you know, especially as we move into the business, you know, Windows is, is paramount. In fact, we just refreshed the whole thing. The app looks really nice now on 3.1. Um, so benefits of transporter again, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, as close to Dropbox as possible. So contextual menu, um, you know. So as you can see, I can create link and copy to clipboard right there. I can show the versions of the file. So one of the really nice things about versioning on this is that it's unlimited. You know, with Dropbox, if you don't want to pay for the pack rat, you got 30 days, and you know, a lot of people have hit a bug in Dropbox and they can't go back and get their stuff. Um, even on Box, I think with Box, they kind of limit file sizes and how many versions based on the different, even on the enterprise, there's some limitations to it, which is surprising. You know, for us, again, that's the benefit of us being an appliance-based approach, you know, is we can just continue to store as long as we've got space. Um, the versionings are just doing differentials, block level differentials, so it's extremely efficient. Uh, on the device, and as Jeff mentioned before, we single instance files on on the appliance. So, if there's a shared folder that's you know on the transporter, and people are copying the file all over the place. Um, again, it's only going to single instance it on that appliance. So, so we do do some things that are really smart 
um, to be efficient with what we're doing. So, Can you enforce restrictions? I, I don't want to keep a version past, say, whatever my backup retention is. That's a good question. I don't know. Do we have any limitations on the versioning yet? Uh, the question was, if uh, can we enforce limitations on the versions if you don't want it to go past a certain point in time? I don't know that we have that no, capability. No. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously, uh, on the folder side, if I want to share a folder, uh, you'll see the transporter has a different contextual menu. Um, so I can share this folder. Uh, I can move that entire folder to the library. You mentioned before it would be nice to be able to right click on something and, and just move it to the library. So the folder's got it right there in the contextual menu. Move it okay, to the library. But that, that moves it to the library. It, it does. not leave it there. That's true. Yeah. It doesn't leave the stuff. Right. So it can't right. stay part of your existing workflow. You have to change your workflow. Which, which is fine. If, I mean, if that's what it is. If that, yeah, if that's what you want to do. What's that? We should talk about that later. Okay. All right. Let's, let's talk about that when you update. We've got some very exciting things going on there. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. That's pretty much it. Um, are there any other questions? You guys want to set up your transporters? You already did. You guys yeah. want to run through I it? I think most, like, uh, mostly everyone's already done it. <laughs> Let's talk, my, my machine had, yeah, because it's Windows, I had to read it, so I'm a little behind. Did you guys already do it? Oh, yeah. Trying to. It, it's trying falling to. offline now. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, net networking networking limitations. Mine did. Yeah. So, who, so who's got it set up already? My iOS client had an issue because I registered this before I registered that, and it kept oh, okay. crashing it, but okay. once I was able to get in to log out and log back in, it's fine now. Great. And Great. I made the mistake of trying to create a business account. Everything's down, but yeah. That's not a mistake. All right. Well, you, so. you need, we are business. It, it won't let you register the cone. And no, I know. It's got a little icon for the personal account for the cone and a rack for the business one. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but <laughs> a business account needs a business unit before you can have a cone. That's true. Yeah. So for Howard, you may not want to do it. I mean, you may not want to wait because we got we got a business one coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, well, it I like just you, created two accounts. <laughs> sounds like we'll you guys are all one. set up. I mean, um, it's pretty straightforward. You guys should have a great experience. Um, you know, hopefully you do. Hopefully, hopefully you really like it. And you know, we'd love to hear your feedback on it as well. Um, you know, obviously this is maybe outside of what you guys do from a work perspective, but uh, but we really are interested in your feedback um, on that. So stuff. you can actually define. Uh, through special folders, any folder on your on your system to be synced? I mean, you don't have to yet. move it. That would be if we had the ability to do custom. So what we've done is we've taken sort of the basic, you know, so desktop, doc, you know, my documents or my documents. The libraries, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you just want stuff where you want to just move it to the transporter, that's what the, the library is fantastic for, and the fact that it doesn't sync. And you'll find with the iOS app, you know, you get the full, you know, file system view of everything. Uh, if you actually want to download it, you just click on it; it'll download it. You can swipe and delete. Um, it's got some, it's got some really nice features. Jeff's actually working on two features that'll be coming pretty soon to iOS that are really exciting. We can, we can talk about those in the, the closed session, but yeah, mine um, recognizes. But yeah, it's good stuff. So, one any other questions? The same serial number. Mm -hmm. but it's Thing I didn't cover. Just blinking now. It's still stuck yeah, in good. startup. Everybody claimed the right transporter device, hopefully. The right serial number. <laughs> We're supposed to only own our own? Oh, man. I unplugged I, mine, so Dave couldn't <laughs> claim mine. Yeah, I, don't I was actually guy. taking Dave's <laughs> offline. The beauty <laughs> is, if I think you might have. to claim them all. Before, <laughs> you leave, <laughs> before you leave, just verify that if you did set it up, that the claim device is the serial number on the bottom. If not, we can just... Oh, uh, oh well. Yeah, I claimed all of them. But that's an un you have to admit, that's an unusual situation. You wouldn't normally have 15 of these things pop up at one time, so... Um, but so hopefully for those of you guys, it's, it was a pretty painless experience. So it's I resisted the temptation. It's blinking in blue, sorry, green. It means uh, it's initiating. Green means it's booting up. Did you just power cycle it? No. Uh, okay, well, we'll take a look God. at that. Because all these um, should have been should have been good to go. So it looks like uh, it might have power cycled. We've got the bad ones. Means. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. These were all pretty fresh out of the box. So it's possible that it, it could, be doing a, uh, could be doing an update as well. No Wi-Fi can. Um, it'll automatically detect new firmware updates and update it. This should have been updated, but that could be what's happening. I actually had it flashing Someone when I was going in yours. and managing. <laughs> Someone claimed it. I was going and managing. I wasn't it. supposed to claim everybody. Uh, you claim everybody's? No, no you already told me I shouldn't claim everybody's. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to take. Be fair. Huh? None of us thought we would have to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> we all thought we have to tell Dave that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so how fair? do I unclaim yeah. them now? I think we should. should oh, probably. did you already? You claimed them all? I claimed a few. I'm not quite sure <laughs> how many I, I might have claimed. The ones you don't want. That would be a great <laughs> opportunity to use the unclaimed. So you you can go in. So if you go into the management site, are you in the management site? Uh, no. He doesn't yeah. know where he is. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. And I don't I don't mean just right now or in the. <laughs> <interview>. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll take a look at that and get it straightened out afterwards. Okay, but, uh, sure. So yeah. What concerns me at this point is is I had claimed this one. Okay. And now someone else has claimed it. Oh, that couldn't happen. I disagree because it has. Really? <laughs> so. Interesting. Okay. We'll have to take a look. What at that. could have caused that, and how would you fix that? As someone, you know claimed it someone claims it out from under you. Uh, so uh, the reason I say that's probably unlikely is that when a device gets claimed, it basically creates well, it a bond like, between um, that account. Like oxygen person. did. So uh, and you go to upload what, pictures. Like if somebody such. actually buys, because we've had this happen a few times, people bought used units that people didn't unclaim. We actually had to act to physically go in and check the registry uh, and and remove it. So. Um, that's that's typically something that requires a support call. You can't <laughs> okay. just go and you can't just go and do it if you can't get access to the device. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if so that cool. really happened, we'll take a look at it. All right, so I, I, I agree. Claim a few of these guys. Yeah, I think you've got most of them. <laughs> I only got six. <laughs> only six. They just have. Well done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How do I know which one I've got? Yeah, right. You can look at the serial number on the bottom. Is it slowly oh, rolling in? You know, it, does, it says transporter, transporter oh, one. You, you, you to the you've unclaimed at least one. Root. Probably good a couple yeah. that are offline, I claimed. Oh, yeah. You know, line. it's a problem with a live demo. You always take a risk Ad when removed. you do a live demo. No. You take a risk. Nope. All right, I'm back on like here the, now. All right. He seems to have let go. Oh, this is mine. Transporter four is mine. Okay. Quick, somebody claim Ray's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. All right, well, transporter Steven, three. if we want right. to shut is not things mine. down, we can, we can start having an architecture and roadmap session. And we'll figure out what's going on with you, Ray. Advanced. Oh. All right, advanced. Uh, so yes. we'll what's your data? serial number, Ray? There you go. There you go. <laughs> so transporter four. Mm -hmm. uh, really? I, see I have to unclaim? Confirm? If you wanted to share a file link, they just click on the link and download it. If you want to share an entire folder, basically you right-click, you can enter their email address, and when they receive that, I just gave up one. Instruct them to download and install the software. Okay. Oh. So <laughs> that, uh, if I'm getting the link All right. of okay. somebody else uh, data, I'll be able I'm to... I'm giving up 511. Like... Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, Keith was sharing his anywhere. data uh, with... Uh, uh, Chris, I'm giving no, no, up no. 606. I know number. Are you talking about folder? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Are you talking folder <laughs> level or file level? Folder or file. Because file, again, is a little different, right? Because we've got the linking capabilities. We don't have the ability to right-click on a up folder and send a link like a public folder yet. But that's something I'll that we're working on. Uploading fast on so today, if you want to share an entire folder's Just contents, over basically LTE you can send an email invite to that person. Right. Um, they would set up a free account. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, they install our apps, which is free. Giving up three. And what did it do is that transporter could be located wherever you have it at your house. It'll actually sync those contents down to right. their computer device. I've given up If they make a change, else. you know, the sync will go back and forth. Now, again, one of the nice things as well is you can set read-only access controls, which is really cool. So, for example, you know, great use cases sharing photos with people that you don't trust necessarily leave those photos alone. Um, like my parents, for example, is a great use case. Um, so you can set it up as read only as well, so they can get access to it. You know, they could copy it out if they want, but they can't. So they can't move the original copy. So, um, but yeah, it's just uh, send them an email. They install the app, and they're good to go, just like Dropbox. Just to go through, right? So it's just the physical devices. You know, instead of sitting out there in the in the cloud on Dropbox servers, it's just sitting in the house. That's really the only difference. Hey. Okay. All right. Thank you.